the so busy. I mean, I went golfing. With, you know, you did. You saw the guys, but I saw. Yeah. 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 So. Hey, Maddie. Well, hey, hello. Um, there's you guys. There's the MLS guy today, but I don't want to wait an extra hour. Yeah, I can't. I'm gonna do it from all three left. Is it a sweat? Uh, we have one o'clock. So, you know, JJ has the next two hours. Good morning. All right. All right. So this class that we're gonna start with is your elevator pitch. So this is like. No, I'm going to show you a couple of videos. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the video. You know, sell me this pen. Okay, sell me this pen. Right. You know, it's this is this is a it's a psycho psychological thing, and it's it's got a lot of good tips. Uh, but then there's a formula to creating your elevator pitch. I mean, when I think of elevator pitch, I think of I have five seconds when I get in an elevator with someone. If they say to me, what do you do? I need to be able to say something to them in five seconds where as the elevator opens, they say, can I get your car? Right? That's the elevator. Like, they, you need to show value in five seconds. Right? So I've been thinking, like, you know, what can I say to someone? What can I say to someone that they would say, give me your car? You know? I can save you money. <laughs> <laughs> it, ha it has to be something. You can't say, let me give you my card. Yeah, but it's not the same it's as the same. them ask. asking you, right? Like, you need to show value where they're like, wow, I need you, right? So, I was thinking about that. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. Sell me your pen video. You have sell to me your, sell me this pen. Right? You have, it's a good video. You did that in both. Where, where do you have you the video? I have, I have video. So, okay, then you have a question about accessing contracts. Yeah. Okay. So, how do I get the sell me? So, how does, how does that awful? So, how do we get the contracts and the buy you asked buy a representation? Okay. So the the our CAR contracts are in CAR. So everyone in California um, is going to join the Board of Realtors, their local chapter. You can't join the National Association of Realtors or the California Association of Realtors. You can only join a local chapter. So our local chapter here is the Greater Los Angeles Association of Realtors. There's other ones around also. But basically, when you join the local chapter, you're assigned a nerd's number. You become an official nerd. You get a nerd's number, and then that nerd's number is the same number for local, California, and national. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk lately just what's going on with this NAR settlement. Um, and what's interesting about the settlement is that Things have changed for how we talk about commissions and how we take buyers out and have to have them sign something first. That is currently binding on realtors and people who uh, participated in the settlement, but it's going to be a requirement for all licensees as of January 1st, 2025. Mm -hmm. So it's not just realtors starting January. It's going to be all licensees. We're going to have to now. Where is a, a licensee or realtor? No, you can be a licensee and not join the board of realtors, right? If you don't pay your dues, you're not a realtor. Oh, I see. Right. So, but then we'll be binding on everybody. All right. So, how do we get the forms? Where are all the forms? So, if you go to car.org, this is California Association of Realtors. You'll have access to this website after you join uh, the local form. Um, if you don't have access, you'll just press when you press when you press sign in. It'll say register. If you're, if you're so, uh, but this is going to be the main page. You're going to sign in, so they will send you something. Okay. And then once you're signed in, I like to think transactions, transactions, transactions three times. It's not the transaction center up here. It's transactions, transactions, transactions. This one, in this big circle, access transactions, and then the next transactions will be down here. It's going to be. Uh, access trans so you're always going to go to access yeah. access transactions the next the next one is going to be validating you and then after it validates you it'll be continuing to transactions so that's 
this is where the contracts live, breathe. Uh, they're changing every day. If you use this online version compared to the downloadable desktop installation version, uh, this will always be the latest contract. So if you go online to the cloud, it's always using the latest contract. If you if you download the desktop version, when you run it, it will, as soon as you run it, it will query the cloud and say, hey, are there new forms available? And then you'll get a pop-up on your screen that says there's new forms. Would you like to download them? So I've I've I use both the online and the desktop. Um, and every single day for the past three weeks, they've updated the forms. Every day. So every, every day. day. So they're, not, they're not showing us what they're updating. Right. But there could be a word here and a click box here. They're constantly, constantly tweaking and making sure everything's working. But this is this is where you're gonna this is the main page after you go transactions, transactions, transactions. Now you're either gonna be in two places. It's gonna be the dashboard or it's gonna be transactions. It doesn't matter which one of these you're at, you're gonna click new. When you click new, it's going to ask you what kind of transaction are you trying to do? Uh, a listing, a purchase, a lease. Uh, again, it really doesn't matter which one of these you click. This is for categorization here. So, but it really doesn't matter. Everything is going to be in the one line active. That's fine. Uh, but if you're working with a buyer, you're going to go no, new purchase or offer. And then you need to name it. So I would just name it the name of your buyer. So my buyer is Anthony Jolie. Oh, we know who you have a crush on. Oh. <laughs> Obvious. All right, Angelina Jolie. Then <laughs> that is my buyer for residential property, active, and then sit. Okay, all I did now was transaction called Angelina Jolie. And now I'm going to click on documents. And this is going to take me to my documents area, which is empty because I haven't added any yet. And I'm going to go to add document. And then the document that I'm looking for, I'm not browsing from my computer. Uh, it's not in Google Drive. It's not in Dropbox. It's in, it's a form. So I'm going to press Add Form, which is going to pull up this column on the right side for the forms. Now, the very first form is the buyer representation here. It's the very first one. So if you'll notice, the, the first three, four forms, first form have a period at the beginning. And they purposely did that so they appear at the top. Uh, just alphabet, alphabet, alphabetization. Alphabet. They're in alphabetical alphabet. order. They're in alphabetical order. They're alphabetized. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to make up words over here. I don't know. Word salad. So, um, so you can find the buyer representation down here. It says buyer representation. What of broker You don't have a buyer or seller. I mean, what if you're like, you know, you just want one person. I know it's just. What if you don't have a buyer? Yeah. So you what just do you want to like print, like you just link. print. Oh. Okay. I'm going to add the buyer representation agreement to my transaction by clicking it. I can also take the drop, the down arrow and say remove form. And then uh, would you like to remove it? Yes, sure. Or I can get the down arrow and say that form. So I don't have it. Okay. So. Now, I have a blank form, and if I try to print a blank form, it's going to tell me enter an address, right? So I just clicked on, uh, if I go here to the print button, there's a little print button back there. Uh, if I go print, I'm going to have to select this little box. It's going to say you can't print because... Oh, it's letting me print. So this is this is unusual. I know that is very unusual. Usually, it will not allow me to print something um, without. Uh, usually, won't allow me to print something without having an address typed in. Now, um, if that happens, let me just see. I want to see print. Why does it do that? So it it wants you to print an address. It was a it was a thing. It didn't want you to print blank forms. So maybe now it's allowing you. Maybe it could just be this form. I have no idea. But if you need to print something and it's not letting you, uh, one trick that I found that works 
is in the address area. Oh, maybe maybe because this form doesn't have an address area. So let's let's add a form. It's that interesting. Let's just add a form real quick. So I'm gonna add a form. Add, I'm gonna add the rep, the purchase agreement. It's not gonna let me print this. So the buyer rep agreement doesn't have an address, right? Yeah. Okay, so California represents here's the purchase agreement. If I try to print this one, Brandon, let's see if it works. Yeah. Action could not be completed. Please enter a valid property address. I found that if you enter just a comma, uh, if you enter just a comma, then sometimes it will let you print. Now, if you just want to print it and you don't want to bother with that stuff, when you press print here, you can say print sample. That will allow you to print it. And then you can use that sample. It's not for me. It's not working for me. But if it print sample usually will let you do it, but it says the word sample across the top, oh. right? That's how it lets you print it. Oh, so I don't I don't know why that could, but it, that's usually how it works. But you can just enter an imaginary address. Uh, okay. <laughs> Was that a lot? Can you tell someone a virus agreement? Uh, you can tell someone a virus agreement. Yes. So if you would, you would only have the buyer agreement. You would only have the buyer agreement here, and you would fill it out. You have to fill it out. So I would put Angelina's name in here, right? And then after you're done, you're going to hit this prepare signing. It's going to send it to DocuSign, and then you'll get signatures on it. Okay. When you're ready to do that, I'm here to help you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, no problem. All right. I do advise, you know, I do recommend that you guys, when you log into CAR, when you go here, um, you know, there is like a learning area here. Where, oh, this is how I spend my free time. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to share stuff, you know, in the next class with you uh, that I've found here. You know, it, there is stuff that's getting updated. There's also some older stuff, but uh, they are updating stuff. So, all right. So right now, let's talk about that. Very interesting. Um, I I look all over the place for coaching. I've been, you know, I've always had a coach. Uh, I think it's important if you want to build your business, have a coach. Your coach is there to ask you uh, how much money do you want to make this year and work a formula that will end up giving you the daily tasks that you need to do to reach your weekly goals, to hit your monthly goals, to hit your yearly goals. So that's what a coach does. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a coach. I'm I can teach you the systems how to do the contracts and all of that. And we do talk about prospecting and who to go after for prospecting, but a coach is really to get you, to help you uh, be, have clarity on your daily tasks and your time commitment to lead generation. So that, that's what your coach is for. And you can also have a coach, let's say your dream is to build a team. That's what you want to do. So there's a coach for that. We, we have, um, we have a, a part of our company called Maps Coaching. Sorry, I'm to the time. Sorry. <laughs> KW Maps Coaching. So they have different prices and stuff. So there is a division of KW. We're based in Austin, Texas. Uh, you know, this is this is a division of the company called Maps Coaching. If you're really serious about uh, committing to whatever it is you need to do to hit your goals, um, there are coaches that are. Uh, qualified with KW to do different activities. So if you're a new agent looking to hit your first goal, there's a coach for that. If you're looking to double your business wherever you are, there's a coach for that. If you're looking- you say if you're a new agent looking to get your full goal, like your first listing, or I mean, sell your first- yeah, want to spend this kind of money for coaching. With, with MAPS coaching, to do that, there are a lot of local coaches. There's also YouTube. So I, I go on YouTube and um, I'm always listening to what these different YouTube people are saying. So, like today, we're gonna we're gonna look at uh, a couple of videos. Uh, but you know any affordable coaches? I know I have a coach with Buffini, and I got referred to them. So if I refer you to them, you can become a member for <laughs> free, and you get a discount on anything you have to pay. But you also don't need to pay for anything if you don't want to. So very coach. Yeah, I, I can just connect. You. I'll connect you with the woman I have, or the guy who connected me and connected me, and all that. Okay, thank you very much. Buffini. 
Yeah. How long have you been with A week. Oh, it just started, but it was recommended by another agent. It's a very yeah, good it's very good. And we're only paying for certain life Cemetery. coaching, <laughs> like modules, they call them, but also like they have a bunch of free stuff. I think so if you tell them you don't want to pay. We need to expand our brains here in LA because no, these agents on in the rest of the country are hundreds of deals a year, right? That's how they, they have to in order to survive. Uh, the only thing that is different about them doing that many deals and us not doing that many deals is how many people they're talking to. That's mm -hmm. it. If you if you reach out to more people, then you have more a bigger pipeline and more deals. They know how to reach that many people. Follow what they're doing to reach that many people. Don't focus on their numbers, don't focus on their prices. Focus on how they're hitting that many people. That's all. How are they reaching out to that many people? At the end of class, if you have time, can you show me how to find the values to a video? The values. Values, yes. Everyone keeps telling me that. I'm like, I don't know why. I'm going to show it to you right now because that is um, part of your value proposition. So right now, right, this class right now is our value to a buyer. Our, our, this is our value proposition class. This is the class. So I'll show you right now. So you're gonna you're gonna log into command. So that's agent.kw.com. This is your command login. Your um, your sign in is not case sensitive, but your password is. When you log into command at agent.kw command, up here in the upper left, you're gonna hit connect. Connect is our is our teaching platform. When you go to connect, you're gonna search for the word value. And here is all the value stuff that's all the latest and greatest. So this the is, top one, the, the latest? Look at this, this is September, 2024, September 8th. This was literally 10 days ago. Is that the one with Gary Keller or are they, yeah. are they all? We got, we got Gary Keller, we got Jason, yeah, there's a bunch of people. Like, a bunch of people. So you would say the newest one is the best? So, uh, so let's talk about, we're agents, we represent buyers and we represent sellers. So if I'm representing a buyer, like just yesterday, there's an agent, that, an agent contacted me and said, uh, she talked to a buyer who, who got her name from realtor.com. It's like, what? She says, yes, a buyer is looking at a property. The, the listing agent said, you need representation. This buyer went on realtor.com and was given three local agents. She was the luck of the draw. And she said, JJ, I need to prove my value to this buyer. So they picked me because they were given three agents. I said, no problem. Um, first of all, ask her if she's talked to a lender yet. If not, get her to talk to Ramin from Rocket Mortgage in our office. Explain to her that the team in our office can help her compete with cash offers. Right? Because Ramin can close a deal faster than any other lender out there. I mean, if he has to close a deal literally three, four days, he can do it. Oh. So, yeah, there's no lender that can do that. Yeah. So, okay, now we have we have these value slides and value stuff. This is all information that you should be incorporating, incorporating into your buyer presentation and into your listing presentation. Um, these are value slides for buyers and sellers. So you click on it and sort of see what it's How would you articulate your value to your clients? So there's downloadable course files here. Uh, yeah. I mean, you you should be looking. You should look at this. I, I don't know why that just left. Um, but so, if someone's right. looking to buy or sell, I mean, let's say they're looking to buy, you would right in the beginning tell them, "Hey, do you have a lender?" Yes, I want to know if I'm wasting my time or not. So, how would you say it to them? Have what you have you spoken to a lender yet? Okay. And then I need to I need to know right away if they have the money and the ability to buy something. Would you give them one lender or do we have to give them? Look, people, people, people want to buy, right? And they might have dreams of what they can get for their money. And I need to know the reality. So right. first thing I'm doing is sending them to the lender. The lender is going to have the dollar conversation with them. How much okay. money are you looking to spend? What can you afford? Then I'm going to talk to the lender. The lender is going to tell me, JJ, go away. <laughs> like this buyer can't do a thing. Okay. Or the lender's going to say to me, congratulations, your buyer can buy whatever they want, okay. right? So 
I'm first having the lender qualify them. And then once the lender qualifies them, we're good to go. We're going to have okay. them sign a buyer rep agreement, and we're we're going to start okay. plugging your property. Okay. But I start with the lender because I don't I don't want to waste time. If I have a buyer saying, "Show me this, show me this, show me this, show me this," and I never and they've never talked to a lender, forget it. Like okay. no way. So you would have them talk to the lender before you even. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's helpful. Okay. Um, I have a shared folder that I share with you guys. And I want to show you that. Just, I just want to show you where I have it. Let's see, KW. I'm just going to show you real quick. This is this is my shared folder, my agent resources folder. And in there, there's a there's a folder called web links. So this is a really, I, I, I put together just a bunch of bookmarks that um, I think will help you in your research. And I'll just, re real quick, I just want to show you. So. Basically, um, home home buyers warranties. These two ten of this we like to use also uh, different home warranties. I have a I have a separate folder for home warranties, but that's a that's a link. Uh, this is an assessor the assessor portal. When you're trying to find out square footage and lot size, um, you can click here. It'll take you directly to the assessor portal. You can put an address in. Um, also, you can get information from the MLS from public records, but this is directly from the assessor. Uh, here's a CAR link, Department of Real Estate. Okay, if you have a tenant that can't um, can't get approved on their own, the landlord wants a co-signer and they don't have one, there are companies that will co-sign for them. Okay, don't think it's the end of your lease when you can't get your tenant approved. There are companies that will co-sign for your tenant. Okay, so that's just one. They're signing for leases. How does it work? Do they pay the company like a certain? Yeah. They pay them a certain amount of money. It's yeah. I mean, basically, I think what is happening is this company is approving your tenants just like they were applying for a loan. They can't have horrible credit. They can't have four hundred credit and right. right. So I, I think this is a company that looks that makes a credit evaluation on them and says, "Yeah, we'll take the risk. We'll co-sign this with them." Okay. Wow. Because what are they really? What are they really? What's their? What's this company's risk? It's really three months of rent, four months of rent, right until the person's about. Because they'll believe me, I'm sure they will be involved in the eviction process. They have to be, right? Um, okay, so company search, California, worldwide. Sometimes uh, you are going to have a buyer. I know this, I'm getting off track on this class. Um, sometimes you're going to have a buyer that, uh, or a seller that's an LLC or a corporation, and it's in California. And you'll be able to go to the Secretary of State website and look it up, look up the information. Sometimes it's not going to give you any results. And it's because you mean on the MLS it will give you when I write an offer, I need to know who my seller is. Who because you have to have parties' names on a contract, mm -hmm. buyer and seller. When I'm going on a listing appointment, I need to know who the sellers are. Mm -hmm. So if you go on this worldwide search, you can enter an LLC and it will search the entire world for that LLC. It could be, you know, Delaware Corporation, Texas Corporation. Right, because if you're only searching California, where are you going to start searching every state, all 50 states, to find out where they're incorporated or registered? So you just do this company search. Uh, here's a link to the to our local board um, insurance. Oh, insurance. Um, LAUSD California School Identifier and School Ratings. Every city has some type of website you can see what the local schools are and then here's the here's the website that you can see what they're rated hopefully nine nine out of ten or ten out of ten here's a local llc or corporation search you stay white also i think this one is countrywide the other one is worldwide um open house sign up sheet that i don't know what that is and i'm clicking on it because don't know what that is because our open house sign up sheets yeah. have now changed. Yeah, yeah that's why. Exactly. Let's see what else. Oh, oh, the open house sign up sheet. This is for you guys that want to do open access. If you want, ah, okay. What is that? If you want, so when an when an agent, so it's, I usually share that document in a Google Drive. So that was just a link. So if you guys want to do open houses for other agents. You can go on the open house sign-up sheet. When an agent in the office comes to me and say, JJ, I need to find an open house sitter for my Sunday open house, I say, here's the open house sign-up sheet. Okay. Yes, yeah, open house sign-up sheet. Uh, view property tax bill. This is something brand new. 
uh, you can view a tax bill uh, on a property and see how the tax how the taxes are arrived at. The actual tax bill that gets mailed to the owner of the property. You can get a copy of it if you know the address and APN number. Here's the interesting thing. Before, if you had unpaid property taxes, the only way to pay that property tax was to uh, go and pay it um, personally, I think, at the assessor's office. Um, because if you didn't have the PIN number on the property tax bill, you couldn't pay it online. Now you can get it with the PIN numbers. Totally and totally improper. Uh, Zemus is a, is a website for properties in Los Angeles that you can get permit information on properties. You can see what kind of zones they're in. You get a lot of information on Zemus. Whenever I'm preparing for a listing, I always go to Zemus or the local county, the local areas, Department of Building and Safety. If you go to the city of Los Angeles and you go to um, Department of Building and Safety, Public Works, Planning Commission, they're all accessing Zemus. So this is their database. Oh, going back to the value thing because you know how I logged you out. I just want to make sure that that video is there. there. Trust me. You, you go to, okay. to agent, agent.kw.com, log in, okay. click click on connect, and then search for the word value. And just I'm saying the it. older videos will play. I hope so. If they don't, you can always call KW or you can go to. Do they have a phone number? Help, help at KW, support at kw.com or help at kw.com. Because I called Sophia this morning and she said it's not there anymore. That's what I'm like. Oh, okay. If there's a missing video, it's because the information that they gave on that video is no longer valid. Oh. So I was teaching some stuff here that became no longer valid. So it's a, actually a very good question. Um, because it booted you right. out of that video. Yeah. So, so the dialogue I was having a month ago was you can advertise concessions paid in the agent remarks. Not you can't say the amount, but you can say seller seller will entertain concessions. Now you can't use the word concessions anywhere. Mm. The only thing you have is a yes or no checkbox in the MLS. You cannot use the word concession in yeah. any part of remarks, yeah. regular remarks, agent remarks, or uh, that quickly changed. Yeah, yeah. So 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 if they were talking about that, which they probably were, they deleted it. And that's because they don't want to give misinformation. This is a, it's constantly evolving. Uh, the newest thing that I just found on CAR is uh, what is an unrepresented buyer? Because on our listing agreements now, there's a spot for commissions for a uh, for the listing agent. The seller is going to say how much they're paying the listing agent. And then there's a spot right under it for an unrepresented buyer. How much extra will you get for an unrepresented buyer? What is an unrepresented buyer? And what can you do for them? What can you not do for them? So, so CAR just addressed that. And I have that. I have that. You have a video for it? There's no video for it yet. Um, it just came out. So but there are answers. So if someone signs a buyer's agreement with you, and like let's say they end up, I don't know, they find a different, some other property. Anything within that time frame, if they were to buy something, you would be considered the agent, right? If you're exclusive. If you're exclusive. And they can only- You have an exclusive buyer rep agreement signed with someone, and they buy something during the representation period and falls under the scope of what description of the property, they will owe you a commission if they buy something. What if it's a property I haven't shown them, but it's in that time? It's exclusive. It's exclusive. Exclusive means if it fits that description, they owe you a commission. Anything that they buy in that time? As long as it matches the description of the property and it's exclusive. Right. If it's because not exclusive, you have to show them. Exclusive agreement with me if you buy this property yeah. and then you buy a different property in that time frame with someone else. That's and I will owe you a commission and the other agent. Okay. I'll, I, as a buyer, I'll owe two. How do you cancel buyer's agreements? You can cancel. But you, the agent has to agree to cancel it? Uh, you know what? We're going to be talking about buyer agreements uh, at 11 o'clock. Okay. If you stay. <laughs> at 1 o'clock, um, Sophia told me to tell everyone that the MLS is coming here at 1 o'clock. So she told me to change you guys to the table. It's <laughs> not real. <laughs> no, she said tell them not to leave. Told, I, yeah. He just said it. Oh, still not canceled. I don't know how. <laughs>
Uh, okay, so here I'm very organized. I try to instruct them. Okay, here's my elevate classes. Um, I'll create an elevator pitch. Yes. Tell me this best. All right. So I think I think this is so important. Um, Want to share? So there are, yeah, this guy. I'm actually going to sign it to YouTube because I have an account where I don't have more. Yeah. Oh, that's useful. Top songs from 2024. If we don't have a Kelly Williams YouTube, if we just search whatever you're searching, it'll come up. Uh, I'm sorry? If we don't have a Kelly Williams on our YouTube channel, we could still... You make your own channel. I, I just, I, I pay for YouTube Premium, so I don't have to watch commercials. Okay. Uh, we can look up the same thing and it'll come up. Yeah, you can look it up. Yeah. You just have to watch some. I think it's... All right, here's the guy. Let's hear this. Let's see. Twelve is the twelve minutes. Twelve minutes. Oh, it's Patrick. How are you going to sell this? Uh, we need. <laughs> but wasn't that a wolf on Wall Street? Mm -hmm. has, is that where he got that? I don't know if that they ended that one too. They do at the very end. Sell me this. Sell me this. Wall Street. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not sure who came first. The chicken or the egg. Absolutely. But it's one of them. Got the other. Wolf on Wall Street is a real story. Yeah. So they clearly started it. Oh, I'm it's sure. about that's what you're saying. Yeah, somebody with the pen thing way back. Yeah. Desires and life. Not about the pen. Well, no, I know that part. I'm saying a lot of true story. So they yeah. started. Who knows? Script. Who knows? What about the Lincoln line? Yeah. Take notes on this, guys. Really. Pick your hair. So this is just saying, get in, get in your head and think about who you're going to go after. Who, who are you? Who's your target market? You have to always keep in mind who, who's your target market. There's no audio playing. Can anyone hear anything? Yes. Oh, sorry. There, there's, no, there's no there's audio no, playing. There's no audio. Not good. Okay. That's not good. Thank you. How come no one said anything? Uh, because it's playing inside the room. It's just not, you're not able to hear it. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> so let me just see if I can just copy and paste the URL. It should just play, though, if you're screen sharing and you're, is the, tele, is the TV muted? TV. I'm not using the TV. Oh, that's right. I'm done. <laughs> Let me try. To try. Let me try. There's these luxurious pants can cost hundreds of dollars or even more. So in that case, if you are selling a pen that's a luxurious pen that let's say is five hundred dollars, right? Do you want to sell this pen too? Why should they buy this? So what is it? To be fair and give a little context, there's no salesperson who's out there selling one pen at a time for fifty cents, right? Because that doesn't make any business sense to pay a salesperson to sell fifty cents pen. So obviously, if you're selling a pen to somebody, you're probably selling something that's a little bit more luxurious, right? And sometimes these luxurious pants can cost hundreds of dollars or even more so in that case if you are some pen that's a luxurious pen that let's say is five hundred dollars right do you want to answer two powerful questions when identifying your ideal customer profile 
who is this for and why should they buy? Now, would they buy a pen because it necessarily writes better? Most likely not, because if you can buy a $1 pen, it could write just as fine or just as good as a $500 pen. So that's obviously not the reason for why someone would buy this kind of pen. And most likely when people are buying more luxurious pens, it's for other reasons, emotional reasons, right? Same exact reason for why people buy a Rublix watches or Chanel bags. Now, there can be a lot of emotional factors for why someone would buy something like a Rolex watch, a Chanel bag, or even a luxurious pen. So it's our job as salespeople to identify why exactly people are buying so that we can communicate this message to our customers. So in the case of selling a pen, right, you could say, okay, who are the people that actually need a nice pen? So it could be salespeople who meet customers face to face, or maybe real estate agents who do deals, right? And the reason for why maybe a salesperson or a real estate agent might want a nice pen is because they want to take it out before they sign any type of paperwork or when they're meeting with a client so that it builds trust and confidence with the customer and the customer is willing to do business with this person, right? So that's one application of your ICP. So no matter what you're selling, whether it's a pen or a watch or a bag, you really need to understand who you're selling it to and why exactly they should buy. And if you're selling something like a pen, most likely they're buying more for an emotional reason versus an actual utility, like just some yeah, yeah, writing. Yeah. Okay, so now that we understand your ideal customer profile, right? Who is this for and why they should buy it? The next step in selling this pen or basically selling anything is to qualify the prospect, okay? Now again, a prospect is somebody who may be a fit for your product or service and you're trying to see whether or not they should buy or not, right? And so our job as sellers, it's not necessarily to sell something to somebody, it's actually to help the person buy. And to do that, we have to first qualify them. Now, there are many different ways to qualify a customer depending on what you are selling. But the two main questions that you absolutely have to answer is this. Number one, do they have the money to buy whatever it is that you're selling? So in the case of selling a $500 pen, are you selling this to somebody that actually has the money because they may want it, but if they can't afford it, they can't buy it. You get what I'm saying? The next qualification criteria is going to be desire, right? Is there a reason for why someone would desire a luxury pen like this? And really, desire stems from pain and pleasure. So does this person experience a problem and do they want to gain in some way? Now, I'll go ahead and give you an example, okay? So let's say a real estate agent is starting up, maybe they're one or two years into their career. And maybe because they just started out, they're entering the high-end homes market. They're lacking a little confidence because this is the first time Maybe they're selling a million dollar house and they're afraid that their clientele may not take this person seriously, right? So this person has a really big problem, which is how do I build trust with my clients so that they can trust me to help them buy and sell real estate. So the desire is to solve that problem and get to a point where other people trust them, right? That's fixing their insecurities, getting validation from others, and also monetarily and financially gaining from selling more real estate, okay? When you're selling a pen to this type of person, you're not only just selling the pen, you're also selling status, you're selling confidence, and you're also selling future wealth that they can gain if they have confidence and do away with any insecurities that they have. So let's get a little more practical. How would you exactly get someone to tell you these things and share their emotions with you so you can position this pen as something that's very desirable for someone, right? So let's say I'm a pen salesman and I am selling to a real estate agent who's young he's just starting up and he's trying to enter the high-end homes market but let's say I learned that he's a little insecure because he's a young person and he's not sure if people will take him seriously right so in this example I'm sitting face to face with the real estate agent I'm trying to sell to and I'm just asking him a couple of questions right so I say something like hey John you know when you are working with different clients and you have to fill out paperwork or maybe you're signing a contract what kind of pen are you using right and John might pull out a pen and say oh I'm using this cheap one I got that you know, the, the market or whatever it was, right? Then I can ask some things such as, you pull out that pen, how do you feel about that? And John might have never thought of it before. He might look at the pen and say, hmm, I guess I never really thought about this pen before. I just used whatever pen I had. It's interesting. So maybe you haven't thought about it, but let's go ahead and try an exercise. Uh, when you pull out this pen, you know, you don't think much of it, but what do you think your clients think of you when you pull that out? And John might say like, hmm, that's a really interesting point. Uh, I guess I never thought about what my clients thought of me, right? And then I could say another question like, okay, but don't you think that it kind of matters what they think of you because they're trusting you to buy and sell their home? And then John might say, wow, that's actually a good point that I never really thought about. Then I can dive a little bit deeper, right? So if I know that John's working with higher end clientele and he's young, I can say something such as, hey, John, I know that you're young and you're working with really high end clientele. I'm just curious, do you ever feel like maybe they don't trust you as much because you're a little bit younger? How do you feel about that? And John might say, like, yeah, you know, I'm young and I'm not sure they trust me. You want to go with veteran, blah, blah, blah. He's talking and talking and talking, right? So now that I'm asking these questions, 
And I'm trying to relate these questions to the pen. I'm trying to show that hmm, his customers don't really trust him because he's a little young and he needs to find a way to help boost his credibility and build that trust so that he can actually close his business deals, right? So now we're getting into desire where I'm positioning the pen not only as a way to write, but then I'm setting it up so that it's going to be the solution to all his problems. So if John really cares about how people perceive him, then buying a pen makes a lot of sense. Similar to a Rolex watch or Chanel bag, people who buy it not only like the actual product, but of course, they're most likely going to care about how people perceive them, right? They wear a nice watch, people, oh, that's so cool. Or they have a nice bag, oh, that's great. You must be very successful, right? And people actually do care about these things. So now we're going to move into the next stage, which is transformation, okay? So you first, we have the ideal customer profile. Understand who your customer is, why they should buy. Then we go into qualifying the customer, understanding whether or not they're a good fit for what you're selling, right? Because if it's not a fit, you shouldn't be selling it to them. So the two main questions you got to answer is, uh, do they have the money? Yes. And then number two is, do they have any desire, right? Is there an emotional need for them to buy the pen? Yes. Okay. So the next part in how you actually sell the pen is you don't sell the pen, you sell a transformation. People don't like to buy nice to haves. They like to buy transformations, right? So if I sold this pen and I said, Hey, John, you should buy this pen because when you buy it, people are going to look at you and they're going to trust you. They're going to have confidence in you and you're going to make a lot more money. Right. John might be thinking, OK, that, that makes a lot of sense. But five hundred dollars, it's nice, but it's just a nice half and he's not going to buy it. Right. So instead of selling the actual pen, you're selling the transformation on how the pen can transform his life and make his life totally better. OK, so I'm going to give you an example of, let's say, how I would pitch this pen knowing John and he's a real estate agent who's young and not very confident in himself and moving into the high end market. Right. Very contextual here. But let's go ahead and use that example so I can show you exactly how I can sell transformation. Let's say we had a conversation. I asked John a ton of questions. He told me all these things. And then now it's my turn to tell him about what I do. Right. So I could say, hey, John, listen, thanks for sharing all that with me. Now, I might be able to help you with some of your challenges. Do you mind if I just tell you a little bit about what I do and how these pens might be able to help you and John may say, yeah, uh, sure, why not? Then I go into my pitch. So I'll say, okay, listen, John, one of the most powerful ways to influence somebody is actually to influence their subconscious, right? You don't want to be this young real estate agent peacocking and trying to show everybody how great you are. You want to do it nice and subtly and influence their subconscious. So when people meet you and they interact with you automatically in their head, they're going to think, wow, I trust this guy. Uh, I trust him to buy and sell my homes and I want to do business. With him. I like him. here's a possible way you can do that in a subtle way, right? Every time you meet with a client, there are going to be opportunities for you to write, whether it's getting their information or maybe it's actually sign the deal. And every time you get to that point, what you're going to do is you're going to pull out this pen and they're going to see how nice it is. Okay. Now, nobody's going to say anything about the pen. Uh, no one's going to say, wow, that's such a great pen, right? Because it's so subtle. But then subconsciously in their head, they're thinking, wow, this guy must be successful. I trust him. I like him. I will do business with him, right? Again, all happening in the subconscious. And it's pretty much the same effect if, let's say, someone's wearing a Rolex watch or they have a Chanel bag, right? Because you're indicating status with physical objects, right? I'm not saying you're being superficial. I'm just letting you know how people perceive others and how you can use these brands and these nice things as leverage to increase your position as a real estate agent. So sure, this is a pen that, you know, writes just like any other pen, but you're not really buying a pen. What you're doing is you're using a tool to influence other people's subconscious, which will in turn help you make more money and be more successful as a real estate agent, obviously. And the best part of it all is that it's a very simple thing, okay? It's not, you're not screaming out you're better than everybody else. You're just pulling out a pen, writing things down, but subconsciously you're building authority, building trust with others. So with that said, what do you think of that, John? And John might say like, hmm, wow, that's actually really interesting. I never thought of it like that, right? And you continue the conversation, handle objections and things like that. I'm not really selling a pen, right? I'm selling confidence. I'm selling future success. And I'm really selling transformation. I'm helping John transition from a mediocre real estate agent into the high-end real estate agent he wants to be. Now, a pen is not magically going to get you there, but it's a tool that you can use on a daily basis that will actually help you get to where you want to go. So again, I'm not selling a pen. I'm selling transformation. Now, to put all these lessons together, right? Number one, we first identify the ideal customer profile. Who is this for and why should they buy? Okay. Now, number two is qualify the prospect. Do they have money to actually buy your thing, which is the pen? And do they have any type of emotional desire to actually purchase it, right? Whether it's self-confidence, helping them deal with insecurities, you know, whatever it is, no matter what your sell is, people are always going to buy emotionally and they justify logically, right? So that's number two. 
qualify the prospect. And number three, you're selling a transformation using whatever it is you're selling, whether it's a pen, a watch, or bag, or whatever it is. And you're helping that person realize that by purchasing this certain product, it's going to help transform their life for the better. And with that, those are going to be the three simple steps to sell this pen and really sell anything to anybody. Now, if you... Okay, that's, that's it. Selling anything to anybody. Now, there's so much going on here in the subconscious. That's really what it's about. It's about people's subconscious. When you're in front of a seller, you're there to win their confidence and trust, right? They need to be thinking to themselves, I trust this person to sell my property. Um, I, I want you guys just to write something down. Um, just write this down. I help X achieve Y by doing Z. Okay. I help X achieve Y by doing Z. X is your audience. That's who you're targeting. And then achieve Y is your value. Y is value. And Z is how. So if you're if you have to craft an elevator pitch, uh, I I help. You know, I help buyers get the best prices on properties by finding them off market things. I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, like, you really have to think. I help X achieve Y by doing Z. And you need a really tight pitch, really quick, five second pitch to get someone to say, Can I get your card? Okay. Can you give us a few examples. So, okay. So I, I can just tell you that a buy, what is important to a buyer, it's going to be uh finding the right property at the right price for a seller it's going to be getting the most money in the shortest amount of time so if you just keep those two things in mind that's how you want to shape whatever you're targeting for a buyer it's going to be finding the right property in the shortest amount of time and at the right price and for a seller it's going to be selling it's like, right for the most money in the shortest amount of time. so just keep those things in mind when you're when you're crafting your pitch and make it one sentence. Now, Can you make a pitch for a buyer and seller like yeah. that you would say? Of course. Me personally, right now? Yeah, you yeah. would say, like, I'm your buyer or seller. Okay. So are we getting in an elevator or are you yeah. coming into my open house? <laughs> we're in the elevator. No, okay, we're in an elevator. I would, so I would say, hi, have you bought real estate this year? No, I haven't. Okay, well, I help buyers get great deals on properties and I have a ton of off markets. Okay. That was up to you to ask me for my card if you want it or not. Do you have a card on you? Absolutely. Sell it. You call me a seller. What about a seller? You're a seller. Uh, a seller in an uh, elevator. Okay, a seller in an elevator. How would I know you're a seller? How would I, I tell you hands. I can house. Sell my house. Have you sold any properties this year? Uh, no, but I want to sell my home. Okay, well, I've been getting my clients more money than. Actually, I have nothing to do today. Let's go. No, no. So I would say, like, um, I, I, I exceeded all my clients' expectations when I sold their houses this year. How did you do that? Here's my time. Okay. Mm. What would you say in an open house? For those open houses? house is different. So open house, someone coming in. Um, buyer. A buyer coming. So I don't know if they're a buyer or they're a neighbor. Right. So everyone has a reason for coming into that open house. So I need to figure out why they're there. If they're not telling me why they're there, they could be a neighbor that's thinking about putting their property on the market and they're scoping out. The what would you ask them when they come into your open house? How would you tell them? Thank you for coming in. You know, what brought you here? How did you find out about the open house? I'm just looking at properties. Amazing. Please take a look. Um, let's talk after you have seen it. And then you know, I'm going to stop them and say, um, um, looking to buy a home. Okay, fantastic. Um, how long have you been looking? A few months. Wow, that's a long time. I usually get my buyers in the hot properties for two weeks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want, I want to, I want to get their reaction. Okay. Like any, but anyone as they're walking out of my open house, I'm asking them, "Did you want to write an offer on this?" Okay. Like, and they're gonna laugh, right? Because, but I'm not, think, I'm not laughing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Want to write an offer, and and if they stop and they say, "No, no, no, no," no. so you wait. Is is there a number that you would buy this property for? Right, because everything has a price, right? So everything, is there a number that you would buy this property for? Let's put it in writing and see if we can make a deal. 
So, you know, because if people say, I think prices are high now, or I think interest rates are high now. So taking all that into consideration, is there a price that you would buy today? With all taking all that into consideration, that's what I want to know. Yes. And what about, I hear what you're saying, and what sometimes they say, um, well, you, what would you um, offer for this house? Oh, as yeah. the agent, as the realtor. So for me personally, yeah. um, it's more about getting the property I like than about the price. Because over time, it's going to go past my price that I paid for. So the question is, am I going to be happy? Is this where I want to be at the end? Because, yeah. you know, you, to lose a deal for $10,000, $20,000, $50,000, you lost on the place that you were going to be living and, and enjoying your time every single day. That's you living that. It, time makes up all real estate errors. right? Time corrects all errors in real estate. Because over time, everything just goes up in value. So the, the thing that could stop it going up in value is like an oil spill next door, <laughs> contaminated land. Or if you're in some kind of if you're in some kind of area that's dependent on a local industry and that industry mm -hmm. goes out of business or something like that. But other than that, your property's going to go up in value over time. But you know, up and down, up and down in the long term. It's gonna go up. How long would you spend like showing your value to a client? But like, you know that you're successful and you know what to do. But I don't know that looking at you. How would I know? You know what I mean? Like I know your JV. If I didn't have your JV, I see you. Well, you're gonna you're gonna know that by the questions that I'm asking. By the by the questions I'm asking you, I'm guiding you. So so if you come in and say I've been looking for a year, and and I'll say, are you working with an agent? Yeah. Well, how's that going for you? I'm looking for a year. What if I say I just started looking? Okay, great. How long do you need to look before you make? Are you the type of person? that can make an instant decision, or do you need to see 10 homes before you make it? I need to see 10 homes. Okay, great. Do you have time today and tomorrow to see 10 homes? Yes, I do. Great, that's good. Here's my buyer ref, let's go see 10 homes. That's simple. I'm making it simple. It's obviously not that simple. I don't know, for me, I, I literally, the last one. That's simple. I like I like to get right to it. Have you talked to a lender yet? Um, I, have a, I have a lender in my office that can do a very fast deal. Oh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Yes, you, we need to worry because if you find the house that you like today, you're not ready to write an offer today because if you're getting a loan, that pre-approval letter can take 24 hours, 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So we need to get that done ASAP because you could lose out on the property that you like if you're not ready. So that, How that's- pre-approval valid for? Um, I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about getting your initial pre-approval. Okay. Because once we have that, if, if it takes time, uh, and enough time has gone by, we can always ask for an updated pre approval. Yeah, we'll uh, we're going to start a new class in a few minutes. Yes, we are. Just going to talk about the buyer process and buyer Any leads? We only have people come to you in town. Yeah. That's good. One guy that might come back next weekend. Yeah. 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 Yeah.